Fallout Tactics brought about many changes to the series. In essence, it had switched the genre from RPG with turn-based combat to a tactics game, be it real-time or turn-based, depending on how you wanted to play it. It's not part of the main series, it doesn't have a 3 in the title. What it does have, however, is a subtitle, Brotherhood of Steel, because for the first time you actually got to play as the Brotherhood. Not the main bit that's in the western coast of the USA, but the splinter group that went out to Chicago to find their own path. One that didn't involve just hogging all the technology, but sharing it with others. And eventually fighting not really all that canonical entities hidden in Vault Zero. This was not a Black Isle game. It was made by the main body of people that worked on the series up until then, though it did have some involvement from them. It was made by a company called Micro Forte, and Interplay did not even publish it under its main brand, Interplay. It published it under the 14 Degrees East label, which was devised for strategy games. And that sort of gave you the idea that they weren't trying to push this as the next Fallout game, but more of a side quest, a side story, a guide in, if you will. And that was a very good move, because this was not truly a Fallout game. A Fallout game is best described as an exploration game, an RPG at heart, truly, absolutely. But it is about exploration, about getting to know, to understand, to see for yourself this world at your own pace, in your own way. Fallout Tactics had more in common with Jagged Alliance or with XCOM. No, no, not, not with XCOM. Because XCOM had a more free, open style of structure. This did not have that. Fallout Tactics was a linear succession of missions. Ones that did allow you some degree of freedom. You did have the ability to make certain choices within them that would have minor effects on what would happen next and greater effects at the end because you could choose what you would do then, how would you decide the fate of the world, well, at least the fate of this region of the world. And there was also the fact that your performance in those missions would give you more recognition within the Brotherhood or less of it. Let's say if you finish the mission by successfully rescuing all the tribals who are being held captive by raiders, your commander would be happy happy. Otherwise, not so much. But it still doesn't sound as though it is very, very Fallout in nature. I mean, a succession of linear missions, that is not really Fallout, is it? It's not. But there was one thing that really kind of made it seem a lot more like Fallout. The fact that you had an overworld that you could explore at your own leisure that was also filled with random encounters and those special encounters like a bunch of cows playing poker. Brahmin, I know they're called Brahmin, but still they're playing poker, a relic from the Pitch Dark movie, which was then just one movie, not a series. And this was enough to give it the appearance of a true Fallout game. To make it seem like something more than just a succession of missions. You could explore, you could go about and do whatever you wanted. Like watch a bunch of robots dancing. It was called a reaver dance because the robots were reavers. And I don't have footage of that, I just found it when I first played it about 14 years ago. And yet there was still something about the game that didn't really fit together. Stylistically, I mean. There was a directive when they made Follow that everything should look like it was made somewhere in the 40s or the 50s. It should look old, clunky. Like they took that kind of design and just slapped on modern technology to it, or modern principles to it, but it still looked like something old. And that doesn't really mesh with the fact that in this game you meet robots that don't look like the one from the Forbidden Planet. You have cars that aren't old jalopies or nuclear-powered Cadillacs. You have Humvees. I do believe you actually had APCs at one point. You had things with sharp corners. So in terms of style, it really wasn't all that great at adhering to the core idea of Fallout. Now, you could explain this away by saying, well, it's a splinter of the Brotherhood, they've been on the middle, I don't 
Chicago -ish area for some time, they've found other technology, they've evolved differently, so they don't have the same stylistic choices as the rest of the Fallout universe. Okay, yeah, maybe you can explain the ways that. Because in most other ways, it does try to keep as close as possible to the source material by using the Vault Boy again for pretty much everything when it came to showing you how stats worked, how abilities function, and again, stats were kind of the same, there was still the special system, but the skills were modified to make up for the fact that you had no reason to talk to people other than being given instructions. There was no more speech skill. So in that way, it is absolutely not a core Fallout game, because the core idea of Fallout was that you could talk your way out of some situations at least. You would have multiple choices. Choices that didn't all involve combat. But again, this was more of a Jack of the Lions kind of game, more of an XCOM kind of game, than a Fallout game. So let's judge it on what it was, what it tried to be. Was it any good? I honestly remember it as being great. In terms of tactics, I remember it being very good, because it offered several layers of options in combat that Fallout did not have. You could crouch, you could crawl, you could individually command multiple characters, up to six I believe. You could plan out a combat strategy in advance, you could pretty much do whatever you wanted to. You could set up ambushes, you could put down mines, you could set down noise traps, you could remote detonate bombs. And on top of that you had the fallout sensibilities of being able to shoot people in the crotch. The ability to unlock doors by either finding a key or killing the person that owned the key, or just stealing the key if you were really good because pickpocketing was still in the game. I have never actually managed to pickpocket an enemy because I never actually invested in that skill, but I believe it was possible if you were really good at sneaking and at pickpocketing. And replaying it now, many many years later, I do not find it to be maybe as good as it seemed to be back then, probably because the games I have played up until now have gotten me used to a more controllable game, but with less features. There was no way to chain up actions in the game. It was all up to you to make sure every character was where they should be, set in the disposition they would have to be, either defensive, aggressive, or don't do anything, and it was up to you to work hard to make all the magic happen. So when starting it again, it wasn't that great until I got back into the groove of it. But when I did, it absolutely was great. For example, you could place a sniper in a position to have direct line of sight to an alarm, have someone else with a shotgun at the other alarm, and then have a guy with a new try and kill as many people as you can, because most of them would run to go and sound the alarm and die because of the other two. Now sure, this may be an exploit of the AI, or at least of the conditions of that mission, but it was still a very very enjoyable thing to see. How can you not love when a plan comes together? And how can you not love exactly how brain the AI in this game was? Real-time tactics games in that area were trying to experiment with new things, things like sound. I remember vividly that uh, Star Trek Away team had actual visual notifications of sound pulses going out and reaching the enemies and alerting them. Fallout Tactics was not such a game. If something was not in view of the enemy, it may as well have not happened. You could kill all their friends with a burst of machine gun fire, have them brutally murdered, exploded all over the walls, and still, if they were out of view, they really didn't react at all. It was kind of sad. But at the same time, I understand a bit. Because if they were all to react, you'd be dead. Statistics for this game started out a bit lower than they would in Fallout, or at least the odds to hit were scaled a bit more throughout the skill range. So even on easy, you'd still have a very high chance to make miss on your first mission, not to mention that this game was meant to be playable in continuous mode as well, so not just turn base. Continuous mode was not something new, it had even been used to some degree of effect in XCOM Apocalypse, the third XCOM game made by Julian Gallup himself, and when you face facts, all RTT games are in continuous mode, though they're not made specifically for maintained combat as 
follow tactics was. So the AI kind of had to be a bit stupid, because otherwise they would all rush you and because it was meant to be playable in continuous mode, you would die. They would all shoot at you at the same time. You could not deal with that. Unless you had grenades. A good grenade in this game was worth its weight in gold. You would wait for a patrol to sync up with another one, throw a grenade and watch them explode in a blood sausage and realize that their ally that just passed on the other side of the corner, he doesn't care at all. Somehow alarms in the middle of the night make more noise than uh, a grenade exploding outside their tents. What also set this game apart from the other Fallout games is that you weren't really limited to humans in terms of companions. Though, no, that's actually not correct because in Fallout 2 you could have companions that weren't human. You could have Marcus, who was a super mutant, and I believe there was a ghoul too, though I do not remember exactly. Here, however, you could have basically everyone, depending on where you were in the progression of the game, on what missions you did and how you finished them, you would have access to different kinds of recruits, because you basically started out by making your own character like you did in Fallout, and then you would have assigned to you two recruits that you could change up and replace any way you wanted to. And you could add a bunch of other people until you had the group of, I believe, five or six. They could be dogs, they could be robots, they could be ghouls, they could be mutants, they could be even death claws. And yeah, okay, there was a death claw in Fallout 2, I remember him. He was dressed in a robe and somehow that made people not see that he was a giant lizard. But he could also customize these characters like you would your own, with skills, with abilities, with perks. It gave a really good sense of immersion in the falloutiness of the universe. You felt like you were seeing something new, something it was always hidden behind the veil in Fallout games. You saw how a super mutant operated now, how they leveled up, how they picked skills and well, you could pick them and stuff. It, it, was, it was something special in its own right. And going back a bit to the combat system, it is still so, so much better than Wasteland 2 had. It could have really benefited from a pause option, you know, like the Infinity Engine games had, but you were here stuck as continuous turn battle mode in real time, having individual uh, turns for each of your characters in the sequencing you would see in Fallout 1 and 2, or having your team act, then the enemies, then your team again. And you could switch between your characters as you wanted to. But I just kind of felt that with a pause now and again so you could properly react to things because one misclick in real time and things would just explode around you and you'd die. A pause feature, a cancel, a turn back, control Z would have made for some less reasons to save after every battle because things would happen. It is Fallout after all, things always happen. In spite of its story not being all that canonical anymore, not that it ever actually was, Fallout Tactics is still a good addition to the franchise. It tried to do its own thing in the Fallout universe and that thing was to refine the combat system, sadly by sacrificing what made Fallout well, more Fallouty, you know, the talking to people, convincing them to cut their own fingers off and the many pleasures of getting drunk in town and shooting everybody or just digging up graves because you could. If you're interested to see the game for yourself you can find it right now on GOG for the price of 8.5 euros. It works perfectly, it even has support for modern resolutions, 1080p and 32-bit even, though at times you do kind of wish there was a zoom function at this resolution because it's kind of hard to see things sometimes. Especially since this game did add a whole new dimension to the game. It's not 3D in terms of graphics but there are levels of elevation, you can climb on stairs, you can put your sniper in a vantage position, you've got a lot of flexibility in terms of combat tactics. Which is probably why they call it Fallout Tactics. Goodbye.